and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. And in your spirit. As we approach the altar of the Lord, we take a moment, a moment to call to mind how much in need we are of the gift of God's mercy in our lives. You sent to you the contract Lord, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You see the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy, Lord. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. While the children of Israel were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover. In the evening, on the fourteenth day of the month, in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes, and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the children of Israel no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response for the psalm. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste, Taste and, and see that, that the Lord is good. good. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Taste, Taste and see that the Lord is good. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the Lord is good. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. The poor one called, and the Lord heard, and saved that person from every trouble. Taste, Taste and see that the Lord is good. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made Christ to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in Christ 
we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them so he told them a parable there was a man who had two sons the younger of them said to his father father give me the share of the property that will belong to me so the father divided the property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. The young man would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hands have bread enough to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and I will go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is now alive. He was lost and is found. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came, approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked, what was going on? The slave replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then the other elder son became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat, so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I, is mine is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice, 
because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm required under canon law to give a homily, uh, so it's going to be very short. I've never liked this parable being called the prodigal son. It really should be titled the forgiving father. Mm -hmm. okay? The forgiving father who loves so much and forgives so much and is always running out to meet us. Powerful. Powerful. One of the most beautiful images of God there is. I would like to now invite uh, Ivan to come forward. He's a seminarian. He'll give us a little bit of insight about what happens in the seminary and all about share life. Hello, my name is Ivan, as mentioned. Uh, my second year of formation at St. Augustine's in Scarborough there. And uh, yeah, I sort of live a little uh, off about me. I grew up uh, in North Brampton. Uh, not too far, I went to St. Leonard's Parish growing up in Notre Dame High School. And yeah, just kind of growing up, the faith uh, was something that it wasn't as all, it wasn't a backbone of my family, it was just kind of there. Some people practiced, some didn't. Um, and yeah, I went through the schooling system and the sacraments and uh, it was never forced. You know, simply, you know, went to, generally went to Mass with my dad on Sundays and other than that, it was, that was the only thing really going on faith-wise. But it was like, um, I guess like a, a candle that just kind of stayed personally in my life. Um, just going through elementary school and eventually through high school kind of thing. Just even just going to Mass here by myself, kind of like feeling some sort of, I guess, obligation or something to, to, to seek out God and His, and His goodness. And then, uh, yeah, so just going through high school, played a lot of... Uh, a lot of hockey growing up was really was my life growing up. Um, played mainly in Brampton and Oakville, and sometimes here in Caledon as well. And uh, eventually, you know, going through high school, had a, had a girlfriend at the time, and uh, just kind of just praying and seeing, trying to figure out what God wants for my life, uh, feeling some sort of call towards priesthood. And I really, uh, it really bothered me at first. I did not like it at all because I thought I would, you know, just grow up, get a regular job, and and a, a happily married life, but um, you know, eventually that, that relationship came to an end, and uh, yeah, I found just through friends, through uh, getting to different programs, and kind of thinking maybe the priesthood is what God wants for me, kind of really growing to, to want that in my life, and eventually didn't join right away, uh, went um, to York, finished out there, and played hockey, and so I finished up my junior hockey in Brampton, and then a little bit in Elmira, just north of Waterloo, and eventually, yeah, joined the seminary about a year and a half ago, and uh, yeah, it's been great. And uh, yeah, God works through me there and through other guys. And it's a bit of a struggle, especially during during COVID and all that. It's been been pretty tough, but uh, it's been good, very very uh, rewarding. And uh, yeah, so I'm here for sure in life. Um, and uh, they basically run the place. They the heavy heavy donor there. You know, they make it livable for for all of us and make it a great experience. And there's, there's about a uh, Overall, at St. Augustine's, there's about 45 guys, and they include the RMs, which is a, a seminary connected to us, uh, but they, they have kind of run their own program. It's uh, more international guys, and they got about 10 guys there too, so around you know, 50 to 60 guys, and you know, Share Life's the heavy donor that really, that really helps us out to get through it, so um, yeah, if you could help out at all today, that'd be greatly appreciated. If not, continue to help us with your, your prayers, so thank you for that. And I think, yeah, like the prodigal son, because I don't think, uh, a lot of people actually know what goes on at the seminary. If you ever want to stop by, it's just on Kingston Road there in Scarborough. You know, I think a lot of guys think it's, you know, guys walking around in cassocks and, and living this, you know, very holy life. And, and in a way, it's kind of true, but it's, you know, it's like, like the prodigal son, where guys who, you know, maybe were always walking with God or, you know, fell away for many years and simply felt God's mercy or God's call in whatever way, and, you know, and came back to Him. And, and join the seminary, or some guys leave, some guys stay the whole way, but you know, God works with us there, and, and that's your life's a great donor to us there. So, we really appreciate you helped out. If not, you know, thanks for all you do, anyways. Thank you. Let us stand and profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Father in today's Gospel is God the Father. He is also and always gazing down the road, waiting for us to return to Him. With repentance and with all of our needs, let us turn to Him in confidence. Speak out loud our needs and the needs of the world. For those who have strayed from the faith and who have not yet returned to the Father's house, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that through its welcome and its ministry, all may experience the loving mercy of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this community, that having personally experienced the love and mercy of God, we may extend God's kindness and compassion to others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the Ukraine, and for the protection of the children, the refugees, and all vulnerable persons, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our sick relatives and friends, and for those who are listed in our bulletin sick list, especially Paul Burkers, who is newly added, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, for those who died this past week, those who rest in our cemeteries and all souls in need of our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, you reveal your power most always through your forgiveness and compassion. Fill us with your grace so that we may walk with joy in the way of your commands. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before we uh, continue, I, the Pope has asked us to... Uh, consecrate uh, Ukraine and Russia to the mercy of God. So please join me in the sheets or the views if you want to follow along. O Mary, Mother and our Mother, in this time of trial we turn to you. As our Mother, you love us and know us. No concern of our hearts is hidden from you. Mother of mercy, how often we have experienced your watchful care your peaceful presence. You never cease to guide us to Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Yet we have strayed from the path of peace. We have forgotten the lessons learned from the tragedies of the last century, the sacrifice of millions who fell in two world wars. We have disregarded the commitments we made as a community of nations. We have betrayed people's dreams of peace and the hope of the young. We grew sick with greed. We thought only of our own nation and their interests. We grew indifferent and caught up in our selfish needs and concerns. We choose to ignore God and to be satisfied by our own illusions, to grow arrogant and aggressive, to suppress innocent lives and stockpile weapons. We stop being our neighbor's keeper and steward of our common home. We have ravished the garden of our earth with war, and by our sin we have broken the hearts of our Heavenly Father, who desires us to be sisters and brothers. We grew indifferent to everyone and everything except ourselves. Now with shame we cry out, forgive us, Lord. Holy Mother, amid the miseries of our sinfulness, amid our struggles and weaknesses, Amid the mystery of iniquity that is evil and war, you remind us that God never abandons us, but continues to look upon us with love, ever ready to forgive us and raise us up to new life. He has given you to us and made your immaculate heart a refuge for the church and for all humanity. 
by God's gracious will, you are ever with us, even in the most troubling moments of our history. You are there to guide us with tender love. We now turn to you when we knock at the door of your heart. We are your beloved children. In every age, you make yourself known to us, calling us to conversion. At this dark hour, help us and grant us your comfort. Say to us once more, am I not here? Am I, I, I who am your mother? You are able to untie the knots of our hearts and of our times. In you we place our trust. We are confident that especially in moments of trial, you will not be deaf to our supplication and will come to our aid. That is what you did at Cana in Galilee when you interceded with Jesus and he worked the first of his signs to preserve the joys of the wedding feast. You said to him, they have no wine. Now, O mother, repeat those words, that prayer, for in our day we have run out of the wine of hope. The joy has fled. Fraternity has faded. We have forgotten our humanity and squandered the gift of peace. We open our hearts to violence and destruction. How greatly we need your maternal help. Therefore, O Mother, hear our prayer. Star of the sea, do not let us be shipwrecked in the tempest of war. Ark of the Covenant, inspire projects and paths of reconciliation. Queen of Heaven, restore God's peace to the world. Eliminate hatred and the thirst for revenge and teach us forgiveness. Free us from war, protect our world from the menace of nuclear weapons. Queen of the Rosary, make us realize our need to pray and to love. Queen of the Heavenly Family, show people the path of fraternity. Queen of Peace, obtain peace for our world. O oh Mary, may your sorrowful plea stir our hardened hearts. May the tears you shed for us make this valley, parched by our hatred, blossom anew. Amid the thunder of weapons, may your prayer turn our thoughts to peace. May your maternal touch soothe those who suffer and flee from the reign of bombs. May your motherly embrace comfort those forced to leave their homes and their native land. May your sorrowful heart move us to compassion and inspire us to open our doors and to care for our brothers and sisters who are injured and cast aside. Holy Mother of God, as you stood beneath the cross, Jesus, seeing the disciple at your side, said, Mary, behold your son. In this way, he entrusted each of us to you. To the disciple and to each of us, he said, Behold your mother. Mother Mary, we now desire to welcome you into our lives and our history. At this hour of weary and distraught humanity, stands with you beneath the cross, needing to entrust itself to you and through you to consecrate itself to Christ. The people of Ukraine and Russia who venerate you with great love, now turn to you, even as your heart beats with compassion for them and for those peoples decimated by war, hunger, injustice, and poverty. Therefore, Mother of God, our Mother, to your immaculate heart we solemnly entrust and consecrate ourselves, the Church and all humanity, especially Russia and Ukraine. Accept this act that we carry out with confidence and love. Grant that war may end and peace spread throughout the world. The fiat that arose from your heart opened the door of history to the Prince of Peace. We trust that through your heart, peace will draw once more. To you we consecrate the future of the whole human family the needs and expectations of every people, the anxieties and the hope of the world. Through your intercession, may God's mercy be poured out on the earth 
and the gentle rhythm of peace return to mark our days. Our Lady of the Fiat, on whom the Holy Spirit descended, restore among us the harmony that comes from God. May you, our living fountain of hope, water the dryness of our hearts. In your womb, Jesus took flesh. Help us to foster the growth of communion. You once trod the streets of our world. Lead us now on the path of peace. salvation always and everywhere 
to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they were reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace and so bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with the angels and archangels, the thrones and dominions, with the hosts of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy, with the entire people your Son has gained for his own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Just a couple of brief announcements. Uh, we'll ask the ushers to take up the second collection for Share Life, and thank you for your generosity in advance. Um, certainly, you're helping to pay for Ivan's education, and you paid for mine. Whether you got your money's worth or not, I don't know yet. You'll have to figure that out yourself. But um, I should have known Ivan had something to do with hockey because his last name is Brewer, so I'm uh, Bruins, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he gets picked on about that a lot. But um, certainly, I want to thank you for your generosity for Share Life. Uh, also, just a reminder for Edge Ministry, uh, next weekend at 1 o'clock, we'll be having a volunteer information center. So anyone who wants to be a chaperone or wants to volunteer, um, it's a fairly easy program, but we still need chaperones, right? So uh, keep that in mind. You may want to check that out. And um, uh, the, you may have noticed as you drove in, the St. Vincent of the Paul uh, bin is there. It will be there for the next, well, this weekend and next weekend. So if you have any old winter clothes, I know I was, I was just about ready to pack all my winter clothes and then the cold came back. <laughs> but if you have anything you'd like to put in that bin, please do so. Uh, it'll be here for a while. Also, um, just a reminder too that um, the Ukrainian relief envelopes are around if you want to help out there for the church on the ground there. CWL also have the, um, the fundraiser for the uh, Easter ladies. So what you do if you want to help, um, they, um, they buy the Easter lives and have them delivered here on Easter Saturday in the, in the morning and then they help to decorate. So, and they'll be in the church for the six weeks of Easter and we remember your loved ones who are remembered in the Garden of Lilies if you'd like one to be put in here on behalf of your loved ones. So you may want to do that. I know... Um, in my own life, I find that really kind of beautiful, especially when Mama just died. I brought in a little lily and I was kind of sad, but when you put them all together, it's so beautiful that it reminded me that heaven is an amazing place. And we, uh, we are entrusting our loved ones into the care of our Lord, uh, one who always races after us, eh? Always wanted to forgive us. So it's a special thing. So I want to thank you for that. And uh, I wish you all a wonderful and blessed week. Um, I often like to tell a joke, so I'll just, uh, we've still got five minutes. But uh, this is a story about a, a husband who's all upset and his wife is losing her hearing. So he talks to the doctor. He says, you know, my wife, she's not hearing me anymore. He says, well, this is what I want you to do. I want you to walk 10 feet away, or, or four feet, no, yeah, 20 feet away, say something, see if she hears you. Then go 15 feet away, then 10 feet away, and then five feet away. So here he is, 20 feet away, saying, Han, what's for dinner? Then 15 feet away, Han, what's for dinner? Then 10 feet away, Han, what's for dinner? And then by the time he gets four feet away, he says, Han, what's for dinner? And she says, lasagna for the fourth time. <laughs> So always be careful when you think somebody else is losing their hair. That's <laughs> uh, just a joke. Have a special and glorious day. Let us stand and pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, Illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, during the Lent season, of course, we've been praying every day for Ukraine, and although we did it already, I think we should do it again. Let's ask for an invocation of Our Lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. The Lord be with you. And in your spirit. Bow your heads and open your hearts. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. And have a blessed week.